Whatever you do, however terrible, however hurtful, it all makes sense, doesn't it? In your head. You never meet anybody who thinks they're a bad person. No, no, but you're still tormented. I mean, you must be. You've killed someone. Don't you just take the past and put it in a room in the basement and lock the door and never go in there? I think possibly even the second time that we saw each other, we expressed our feelings for each other, and then the fourth time we saw each other, he asked me to marry him, to my total astonishment. And equally astonishing, it certainly wasn't the first time anybody had asked me, but it was the first time I'd said yes. What did he actually say? Uh, will you marry me? Very, very conventional. An ordinary, it's a strip of paper, and I suppose the obvious thing to start with is that it quite clearly has two sides. And I've um, sat and looked at that from time to time and thought, well, that's so obvious that it really doesn't need saying. It's got two sides, two ends, and two edges. If I had a group of people in front of me and I was saying, use this piece of paper to make a ring, I would expect that by and large people would automatically close the two ends to make something like the beginnings of a paper chain. I think people would describe me as pretty sharp. Um, and then if I ask you to take that ring and just open it up slightly and with one hand turn the end of the ring over so that there's a twist and then close it. There's a, that's a different kind of ring altogether and that's a ring called a Merbius ring or Merbius strip, named after a German mathematician. Liar, liar, pants on fire. And you're a gentleman. That's another lie. This is a perfectly ordinary street in the middle of town. It's the main road into town. Flattering, of course, it's flattering. Somebody stops you in the street and invites you to that kind of event. It's flattering. Tourist lost. What are you doing on Saturday? Excuse me. And he said, would you like to come to the medical mess dinner? It's a formal dinner. It's at one of the colleges in town. Uh, I've got two tickets. Would you like to come? And I said, OK. Almost anyone faced with a Mabia strip starts to push their finger in to check what's going on and you come back to where you were and the inside has become outside. That's a risky situation for a little being trying to walk on that strip. The inside is now outside and, and you've got this playful thing going on. First, odd really, then you sort of think, well, it's playful and then you suddenly find it's actually probably quite profound. Then I never heard from him again. The medical mess dinner never happened, said that there was a problem with the tickets, but we'd do something else. And then I never heard from him again. Cross my heart and hope to die, drop down dead if I tell a lie. I think this jump that defies your normal intuition is sort of has a resonance without us being able to probably scientifically nail it. Out there, we jump dimensions. We've heard about it in loose science talk that there is a fourth dimension, or you jump dimensions in Star, Star Trek, and there are potentialities out there where one feels not confined by the world we inhabit. The straight jacket routes we walk down. There is a jump possible, or a wormhole in space, this sort of thing that burrows through dimensions. It all really started then. Three months, four months. I was curious as to what happened, and I phoned the mobile phone number again. He said, oh, well, you've got, you know, this is marvellous that you phoned me. I, I must admit, I was curious. What the hell? We managed to meet at King's Cross Station. Very strange thing happened, or unusual thing happened, that we ran into somebody he knew. 
burrows through dimensions. And that, for some reason, gave me confidence because obviously if you meet somebody in the street, you meet them completely out of context. And I thought, oh, well, that's all right. That's all right. It all really started then. Let's go and see what happens. Two people, one sitting on one side of the paper and one sitting on the other. They're actually on the same side. There is no boundary between those two people. Little pig, little pig, tell me a lie and I'll knock that fat clean out of your eye. It all seemed very easy. The thing sort of turned a corner. We it seemed to be getting, getting on much, much better. better. And and it, all seemed, seemed, it, it seemed as that we've known each other a lot longer. It all seemed very easy. The mathematics for the Mebius is fairly simple. You know, three dimensions to it. You've got an X component, a Y component, and a Z component, which is the way one describes a point in space. So, so it is a full three-dimensional object, object, but a very strange thing because it just seems so odd. Serendipitously, I was looking at the same time at the Mobius strip. I saw a person who um, had a perfectly acceptable personal social way of being who became disturbed, disturbed and, and unwell. unwell at, at that, that time, time was disturbed, disturbed by memories of having been a victim and thoughts of victimizing someone, someone else. else. And, and when that happened, he um, literally sat in front of me and tried to contort his body. And it was very disturbing to watch him, to what, what, watch what he was doing with his body was as disturbing as what he was talking about. And I was very worried that he was actually going to break his fingers. Serendipitously, I was looking at the same time at the... Mobius strip. If you tread on a nick, you'll marry a brick. And a beetle will come to your wedding. I said yes. Uh, did you know him very well then at this point? Well, n n no, uh, really. I, I suppose, no, I didn't. I'd seen him four times. There has always to be a loose end. There's always got to be something that does, isn't quite... Explicable. Ask no questions, you'll be told no lies. Shut your mouth and you'll catch no flies. No, no, I'd, I'd never accepted an invitation to marriage before. And uh, here I think I should come clean and say that the other people who asked, charming, lovely, and everything you could want, but not what you would call providers. Ian, although he was still a medical student, I, I suppose I'd got cannier by the time that we met. By the time he's finished studying, he will be able to take over some of the burden that there was also some sense in the decision apart from the emotion, apart from the emotion, the emotion. Believing two different things at the same time in, in emotional terms is the equivalent of psychosis. So it's actually not possible for us to do. We, we flip very quickly between two things. It's very difficult for us to hold good feelings for somebody and also have in mind that they've done something really awful. And what we do quite naturally is that we lose bits of information. We flip very quickly between two things. And I said, oh, I've been trying to get you. I've been quite worried. You hadn't cleared your answer phone. 
And he said, no, well, I was away. Uh, I went walking with friends uh, in North Wales. I said, oh, lovely. I've got some friends down there. And I said, Where, whereabouts in North Wales? And he said, Cardiff. I said, well, that's South Wales. And he said, well, I call it North Wales. And I just laughed and said, well, I'm surprised you found it. And then moved on to the next part of the conversation. It behoves us to not forget bits. Pascal says... Equilibrium is the precursor to death. Why can't we believe the Mebius? We live in houses that has an out... The window is... You look through the window to the outside, and then you live on the inside. You put a skin around a, a locker or your cabinet, and, and you lock things up inside, and you're outside. And nature is outside your body itself, and you are inside your body, and your skin is... And so I think it's so deep in our psyche about what's inside and outside. It will be strange as a given to have a piece that is both inside and outside at the same time. It's like having your insides pulled out through your mouth and, and yet it's working inside you and yet it's outside you. One, one step leads to another. If I'm soft, you're hard. If I'm butter, you're lard. If I'm treacle, you're cheese. Mind your own business, please. A violation is something very different. It's a crossing without consent. By its nature, there will be some people who we call predators who are looking for ways in which to cross and get inside them in a way that 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 person doesn't want to be so good at it that the person doesn't notice. And if if we think in terms of fraud again, for instance... People become very embarrassed at being victims of fraud. I think we all have the experience of looking at somebody else's victimization and thinking, goodness, how did they fall for that? But if you're a victim of it yourself, you may well think the same thing. How did I fall for that? But somehow you can also see how you've been gradually taken in, which is actually the same process as we talk about in terms of grooming. And whether that's in terms of fraud or sexual violence, it's about gradually acclimatizing the other person so that they don't notice until it seems too late. One, one step leads to another. There may be a sudden dawning that they've got caught up in something, that they're implicated in something that they didn't realize So your skilled predator Telltale tit seeks to gradually move their victim into a position where Your tongue shall be slit They feel trapped Shall have a little bit And the predator might then reinforce that And it's a skill They can do it remarkably well Shall have a little bit There are some circumstances in which there's no boundary to see. So whilst we go about our work expecting that there'll be a kind of red flag that flies in in front of our face, actually at least half the time in our working lives and in our lives, no such flag will crop up. It becomes more reasonable to rely on more external things so that the red flag might simply be a thought that, oh, hang on, I'm doing something that I don't normally do. That's interesting. Why? And it might be something perfectly innocuous, like, oh, that's interesting, I just shook that person's hand and I don't normally shake people's hands. It all seemed totally natural, totally real. It never occurred to me that what he was telling me wasn't the truth because it was always so detailed. When he arrived for a meal, for example, I would say, as one does, you know, what did you do today? And there would be very close detail about the, uh, in that particular occasion, I remember, about the uh, GP that he was with on a GP placement, the patients that he'd seen, So there's this category and there's that category. Then we found that 
actually it's more subtle than that because in reality, little things from one category really influence another category. And the boundary is actually quite permeable in, in a mathematical sense. The predator's job is to stay connected because they've got hooked in and they're enjoying the hurt. I never saw him in his white coat, but he had a white coat. He had a stethoscope and had a guy's hospital tie on. It seems to be a feature of our world that we, when we're describing something, we describe that something in terms of the thing and the process. Kiss your own sweetheart and don't kiss mine. Ian was going to America for a holiday with friends. They were supposed to be a connection through his uncle. Phoned again, no reply. I panicked. So I had a phone number that he'd given me the previous time he went to the States, something like eight, nine months before, and I rang it. Then I got a phone call from Ian, furious phone call. I've only got to be five minutes late and you've got the Interpol out after me and phone rang, I picked it up. American voice said, uh, hi, I'm the name, you know, I'm, let's say, Shelby. You know, hi, I'm Shelby. And I said, oh, hello, yes, I, I know you. you Ian was staying with you in the States. And she said, uh, no, no, I'm Ian's girlfriend, but don't worry, there's a bunch of us. She had gone through the phone bill and called all the numbers in England that she didn't recognize and found a whole group well, she got up to, I think, she got up to six when she got to me, who all thought that they were in girlfriend, partner, sometime long-term partner, six, seven-year partner. My initial reaction was, I won't say, I, I, don't, I won't say disbelief, it was just shock. I felt sick. It, it was one of those things that's such a shock that you're... Cry, baby, cry, put your finger in your eye, hang him from a lamp post and leave him there to dry. I went through the records at Cambridge Medical School. Of course, there was no trace of him at all. The whole thing was untrue. The fact that there were a lot of other women bothered me a lot less than the fact that he was not what he said he was. And then when you thought about it, we, I realised that we hadn't had a single conversation that was true. It's typical of non-linearity in a way. The linear world, to, to use that word, is a predictable world. If you have this, then you can predict where it's going. That's a linearity of thinking. The Mebius, by its twist, jumps out of linearity. So it's non-linear, and you can't, by looking at a piece of it, say where it's got to, which is an awkward position to be in and an uncomfortable position to be in. Because actually, non-linearity carries risk. And the Mebius strip is full of risk. When you say to somebody, what did you do today? What he said wasn't true would meet him sometimes at the library. Well, of course, he just popped into the library and was coming out of the library. He wasn't working in the library. And there wasn't a single conversation that I could reflect on that I felt had been true. How many women were there in total, do you think? 
in total, uh, there were probably about 18 others, but the, the hardcore, the central core of people who all thought that he was uh, only with them was six. I'm more interested in margins than boundary. The travelling margin is also a very interesting architectural idea. The linear world is a fairly dead world where you categorise, put it in, put it in little baskets mm -hmm. and draw straight line predictions between them. I'm not sure if I would have outlived my useful purpose if I had, for example, if I'd run out of money or if I hadn't been well or something like that. I really don't know. Um, it keeps tricking you all the time. I didn't recognise his voice at first. He was saying, he kept saying, how do you feel, how do you feel, how do you feel, what are you how thinking? How do you feel, what are you thinking? I started crying. I started crying and he are said, you are crying? you crying? So of course I said, no, 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 no I've, I've got, got a cold. cold. Do you still love me? No, no, I don't. I, I said, well, how, I, I don't no, know who no, you are. I don't know who you are. Everything said and everything said that you've ever said to me was a lie. You're not a medical student. He said, oh, important. that's not important. I said, well, yes, it is important. Classically, one of the symptoms of psychopathy was said to be a failure of empathy. And increasingly, people are rethinking that one and reckoning that it's not that somebody with strong psychopathic traits has no empathy, but rather that they may have very good empathy, but they, they use it against the person. The sister knew. The sister knew it was all a pack of lies and thought it was funny. And she just laughed and said, I think it's funny. I mean, the, the, the only thing that really, the thing that most upset me, and this is appallingly uh, self-obsessed, the thing that most upset me about this whole issue was, did I appear vulnerable? Did I appear a vulnerable woman? That really distressed me. I wouldn't say that he preyed upon me in that way because, uh, well, hmm, preyed upon... Uh, would I say I was a willing victim? I mean, he was somebody that I fell for and then behaved with exactly as I would behave anybody else that I fell for. Well, you, wouldn't, you, you weren't really a willing victim because you didn't know you were a victim. No. We like to be able to rely on things that we call facts, which are immutable. He said, stop persecuting me. Any sort of inference that he'd done something wrong or that he behaved shabbily or that he behaved in a despicable fashion was a persecution. A genuine victim can find it very difficult to prove that something traumatic has been done to them. Say soap, pull the rope. Snip up. You just cut it and if you cut through the mebius in little bits, you'll just get little bits. You get little rectangles when you take a scissor and just cut through it. Snip up. Cut. Well, it'll fall apart into two parts. If you cut across its width and then you cut another one, you just get little strips, little rectangles. And by looking at the flat pieces, you'd never be able to say where it came from. Snip up. I think if he were to tell the story, he would say that he met me, wanted to impress me, started on a story about who he was, got trapped in it, and then, because he fell for me, he kept on in the story and he couldn't get out of it and was worried that if he told me the truth, I would leave him. Tell tale tit, your tongue shall be slit, all the dogs in town shall have a little bit. People talk about factitious victimisation, which is the predator engaging in a sadistic relationship, as in stalking, for instance, but putting a twist on it so that it seems as if they're the victim. 
And as soon as there's a relationship, uh, people look at that and say, well, it takes two people to have a relationship. So if the victim becomes upset or angry, which would be a fairly normal response, the predator is then able to say, that person's being angry with me. And for what? Silence in the frying pan. The sausage wants to speak. And the accused, they and their solicitor, if they just snip up, if, if they've engaged in a sadistic attack, that is an attack in which there was a twist in the process, and that that was fundamental to the harm that they caused, all they have to do, if you like, is to take the facts and snip them up and get the jury or the court to agree on those individual facts and then um, assume that they're going to be put together in a straightforward fashion. And it all looks very silly. Or worse, it can look like the victim has spuriously made claims against an innocent person. And also went to the police to see if she could bring a civil action. And in fact, he had done nothing illegal because he had only told a story. The fascinating part of the Mebius is that it's non-linear, of course, as I said, but it also is non-linear because of a fundamental characteristic of non-linearity is feedback. It feeds back on itself. Now. All linearity doesn't have that. So we are accustomed to straight line following. There's a cause and there's an effect. Newton defined a force as having a cause and then there's an effect miles away. Nobody ever questioned what happens between the cause and the effect. Now we know that the effect is buried in the cause. I've heard the police say that if you're meeting with a sex offender, they start grooming you from the first moment. And that's actually a very helpful concept. I, what I explain to them is they won't, they won't see the boundary because there isn't a boundary there. It's an aspect of life that we don't think about very much, but you've always got to find yourself somebody that you can go and talk to when you find yourself in an odd place. I don't think it's made me any more wary. Uh, it hasn't made me more wary. It probably has made me slightly less trusting in that when people tell me something, I don't necessarily believe it. So you've never seen a picture of him? No. The Mebius is a complex system. It is irreducible. It is what it is in its entirety. You have to embrace it completely. Oh, that's a photo of Ian and myself at my mother's house, the time that I took him there to meet her. There he is, here, photographed in this room, sitting at this table. Got a nice smile. Yes, no, it's a lovely guy. I think it is probably is more than a metaphor. I, I don't think I created it. I think I stumbled on it. The Mobius strip is something that the mathematician who found it found a part of the universe. Ask no questions, you'll be told no lie. Shut your mouth and you'll catch no flies. <laughs>